Today's metal detector is a highly sophisticated and sensitive instrument designed to respond only to metal. And a little half gram gold nugget. And they do that within the limits of human engineering and a very sophisticated and precise electronic components. Yes, the uh, GPZ7000 is certainly an incredible machine, isn't it? Let's see what's in this hole. When it comes to finding gold pieces, the stakes are very high here in Australia. If you can penetrate the gold fields to two feet down and have sensitivity enough to pick up a quarter ounce gold piece, then you have the potential to find much larger pieces in the exact same spot. As history shows that the old timers here often found very large pieces of gold in small patches of dirt, most often far less than two feet deep, many of them actually on the surface themselves. And they are found in what they call the alluviums or the shallow workings. But getting a metal detector to work in these areas is a challenge in itself and has taken years to perfect. Take for example this circuit. It might look simple, but it works just like an engine stuck on flat out. And if anything goes wrong with it, it will self-destruct and need complete rebuilding to work again. Slide these over. In fact, it is often easier to start the rebuild from the ground up with all new parts as if one faulty part is missed the whole system will instantly crash and burn again as you can see they operate on a fine and very precise line and are either on or they're off you could refer to the batteries as being like a fuel tank in a car. This large rectangular item is the capacitor or the carburetor. This part temporarily stores and feeds the engine on demand. The heart of the engine is this transistor or the engine cylinder. It works like a power booster to the search coil. This part here this is the guy that's doing most of the work and pumping most of the power into the coil. Now this guy here actually supplies all the power temporarily. These can get so hot that they burn out. So you need an aluminium heat sink. The whole engine or circuit is directed by these little fellas here, the integrated circuits or ICs as they are known in the computer terms. Here I am insulating the wires with some heat shrink and I'm going to conduct a, an experiment with some salt water in a bucket. You can see the light flashing on the side of the bucket. But like the modern engine, you can't increase performance by upgrading one part alone as the whole system is dependent on all the other connecting parts. What I like about the GPX series mine lab is that like in that soil not only does the whole system work well but it does so with very little or no loss of search depth even in the most severe of grounds and it does so automatically. In other words Every beat is recalculated to adapt to the changing ground conditions. Here you have a much more sophisticated circuit, better performance and a very comfortable ride. The White's TDI metal detector is another high performance modern pulse induction. What I like about this detector is the loud and clear audio circuit and it's a unique ability to clearly separate ferrous from non-ferrous metals. Ferrous are the rustier items and the non-ferrous are the metals like aluminium and gold. 
Many metal detector manufacturers make DD coils for dealing with difficult ground. The theory is that there is not so much surface area, so it doesn't pick up as much interference. It's a nice Queensland bushland here. A little bit of diggings around. The bigger ones are up further. But uh, working around here and found a nice little nugget just before. I'm trying to find a spot again so I can sort of rake it out and hopefully uh, maybe find another one. Best of luck. All right, guys and girls, out here um, around, around Warwick area and uh, in the permission area, so we're allowed to be here, obviously. Out with a couple other blokes, three other blokes, got a couple of SD, oh, not SDs, GPZ 7000s. I'm using my trusty old 3000 once again with the old 8 inch uh, mono coil. And uh, I'll show you the hole, I only just dug it out, and I'll show you all the rubbish. That little hole there, you can only just fit your finger in, wouldn't even think it was right. There's this little gold nugget sitting right there. Now, I've been out here for five hours today. I'm enjoying myself. It's beautiful being out here with nature. Absolutely love it. Dug up lots of rabbit, rabbit bullets and lead and tin and all sorts of stuff. And that might not be worth very much, but that's natural gold. Happy days. However, there is still a limit to the sensitivity, as this diagram shows. Anyhow, I will leave you with just one other thought. What if you could focus the field by tilting them towards each other? Would that increase depth and sensitivity, or would that be breaking the law of physics? Or what about having two fields operating over each other and at different times? Normally with a coil this size, you can't pick up anything under a gram. Right. Here we have a gold ring that's about a gram. Okay. As you can see, picks it up. Not a problem. But if you've got a small gold nugget, it's hardly picking it up. That's normal. It's just asking too much for a metal detector to find a nugget that's 0.3 of a gram. But if we do a little bit of adjustments, this little trim pot here, now I know this is not the neatest circuit board in the world, but all the parts are protected. Now when you're making adjustments, it's this pot here, you make only do half a turn adjustments. As you can see, and this one here as well, they both work together. I've always wondered why metal detectors are so expensive, and I think the answer lies in the fact that a good metal detector has to be tuned by hand and to a large extent can't be mass produced. Also, if you consider that the White's TDI, for example, has no less than eight of these adjustable trim pots. As you can see, it's starting to pick it up. It has to be individually hand-tuned to work in harmony together. Sensitivity is increasing. That's pretty good. Normally, you'd need a very small coil to pick something up like that. Then you start to understand just how remarkable these now, instruments or machines are. Like I want a tiny little lead sinker. It's about the smallest lead sinker you could possibly get. I wonder what that would do. It's about the same. Actually it seems a little bit more sensitive with the gold nugget. That's a 0.3 gram gold nugget. Uh, that's good, because I've actually tuned it to pick up gold better than lead. There's the lead sinker and the gold nugget side by side. As you can see, they've got roughly the same surface area, yet the gold piece was responding much better than the lead piece. Anyhow, we've got that running optimum. There's a little speaker there, but there's a humming noise coming from the actual coil itself. I don't know if you can hear it. If I get the camera closer in, it's going to react to the camera, but there is a hum coming from that coil. 
Now I've got some highly mineralized soil just there. Just going to put that on top of the co coil and we'll see what happens. It's going to react badly to it. Alright, it's settled down. Alright, we're going to make it extra mineralized by putting a few of these on there. Okay, I'll just show you what that looks like. It's reacting to the camera. <laughs> 